I have Kong Skull Island. And the main question I had for this film is why? Like, why do we need another Kong movie? Sadly, the answer is, of course, they want to make a bucket full of money, and I get that, but mm-hmm. I'm just, like, exhausted of remakes or readaptations or whatever you want to call this, because yes. it's not, like, a shot-for-shot shot remake, and we're going to talk about one of those soon. Okay. Um, uh. But, you know, it's, it's Kong Skull Island is another King Kong origin story. It's not exactly the same as the original. It's not the same as the Peter Jackson one either, so I guess it's, like, a little bit different in that sense. The cast has so much star power. It's Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, John Goodman, Samuel L. Jackson, Tian Jing, Toby Kebbell, Jason Mitchell, and Corey Hawkins, who are reunited after Straight Outta Compton, which I was like, aw, oh, it's yeah. nice to see you together. John C. Riley and Shea Wiggum. And so again, it's all of these really famous people in this movie. And every time I see one of these, I'm like, you don't need the money, and you could pick almost any role. You're Sam Jackson. You can you can be in everything. He is in everything, mm-hmm. which I guess he just likes being in movies, so I get that. Hey, snakes on a plane. Yeah, Perfect exactly. Example. Exactly. But at least that was like fun. <laughs> Real quick, don't some of the movie studios have contracts with the actors, though, where they have to appear in certain numbers? They used, numbers? To. They used to. That, That's to. like the old school Hollywood okay. method. And yeah. like some some movie stars like do have those types of deals, right, where they're like, but usually there's like directing and producing involved, right? Like Ben Affleck is a good example where he and Warner Brothers, who actually made this movie, like have a, a really tight like relationship where he stars in a bajillion Batman movies and they allow him to make, you know, a bunch of whatever he wants films. That good I movies. Think they did. Like no, Argo, no, 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 no. Right? Argo is Argo, an exception. Argo, I love. But we talked about like live by night where yeah. I was like why are you doing this oh, like yeah. he had to he had to be in the account so it's and it's not like okay. a legal contract anymore I don't think but you know it is this like kind of like quid pro quo scenario but this one is not one of those there's okay. a whole uh, separate thing about contracts for this that I will talk about yeah so again I'm like why are you guys in this I was trying to write out the plot in a concise way and as I was writing I was like this is so absurd like why am I I can't even articulate this but I'm gonna try because it just sounds so silly so here's my best attempt the film is set at the end of the Vietnam War which is again different from the previous ones John Goodman and uh, Corey Hawkins are scientists they convince the US government that they need to go to this previously unexplored island that has not been on the radar before and that is Skull Island. So they head out with this like scientific exploration and then Samuel L. Jackson is leading a helicopter troop who is their military escort and like there's all this stuff about like oh it's the end of the Vietnam War and they were like about to get to go home and Sam Jackson's like no I want to go back in on a mission and you're like all right this is getting weird already. (laughs) So Brie Larson is a war photographer and Tom Hiddleston is this like ex-British soldier that they hire to help them track and guide in you know in the forest and I'm just like I'm like I'm already rolling my eyes and I'm rolling Mm -hmm. my eyes as I'm saying this stuff. So they get to the island and they run into Kong and of course their first reaction is just to immediately start shooting and it just like makes me sad right because one it's like it feels reflective of kind of like the mentality of a lot of people right now and like what we're seeing in the world and I know that's sad mm-hmm. to like impose that on a monster movie mm-hmm. but, I, but it was literally just like oh giant ape start shooting not like what the heck is happening maybe uh. we should like see what's happening here it's like I see something I don't understand and that's not doing anything to me doesn't matter gonna shoot it so of course Kong in self defense like smashes all their helicopters they get stranded on different parts of this island and they have to make it to the rendezvous point by three days or they'll miss their boat home. Yay, there's your plot. And Does Fay Ray come back to life in this one? Given the number of like digital like re-upping and like characters of dead actors that we've seen lately, like that wouldn't have surprised me. But Brie Larson is basically like Fay Ray's character right. role. Like she's the pretty woman and you know. And I hate it when a movie makes me not like Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I, he's, a, he's a great actor and he's great as a villain, but he was so one-dimensional in this so like they're trying to like shoehorn this plot about how he's a war hero and you know because Kong killed his men he wants revenge and he's just like unapologetically like bloodthirsty in this but I'm like dude you shot him like you should you have no cause for revenge and so again it just felt like very one one motivation I'm like there's more to there's more there has to be more to this than that so the one plot point I did love and this was the improvement I liked is that they added John C. Riley, and he is been stranded on this island since World War II. So he's been there a really long time. <laughs> and he, so he's like crazy bearded and like wearing like his old aviator outfit. And he explains that like Kong is actually protecting this native population who's never been seen before. Uh-huh. And he's like the, the guardian of the island. And he's by far the best part of this movie. Like he's the comic relief. He's a really funny actor. He's got all the good 
lines. I won't go into the rest of the story because who cares? Uh, <laughs> and also, so this is what I was going to talk about about deals is that this is setting up for a crossover with the 2014 version of Godzilla and King Kong. So oh Legendary, God. who was part of this movie or part, part of the producers of this movie, are like planning this whole monster series. And so this is basically going to set up for a crossover. And if you've ever seen some of the, like the super cheesy Godzilla crossovers. You're How about like, Gamora? But, right. It's like there's this whole entire genre of Godzilla films. And I'm yeah. like, I just, I visually don't see how Kong and Godzilla are going to come together. I don't necessarily know Only if I want in to Hollywood. see that. Right, Only right. In Hollywood. Yeah, so the film was rated PG-13 and they definitely push that a little bit. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of like exploding and a lot of gross things. This film definitely could have used an editing pass or two in a story pass. I do have to say there are parts I enjoyed again. John C. Riley is really great. I was really frustrated because I hate when a film doesn't pass the Bechdel test, which again is two female characters with a name talking about something other than men. Uh-huh. There are literally yeah. two female characters in this who have names. They don't talk to each other at all. They are literally on a boat together at one point, and they just, like, don't talk to each other. Also, like, this film could just be named Brie Larson stares into the distance as things explode behind her. Like, half of this film is just Brie Larson staring. And I love Brie Larson. She's an amazing actress, but I was like, Brie, what you doing here? Like, come on, use your words. Yeah, so this movie is, like, it's nothing more and it's nothing less than what it promises, right? So if you were already stoked to see it, like people in the theater were stoked. Like they were clapping. Like they clapped for Kong at the end. Like that's, I was like, okay, that's pretty cute. Like, so if you wanted to see this movie, like go ahead, see this movie. You're going to like it. It's not like, it's not awful. I think I'm just exhausted. So if you are mm-hmm. someone who falls on that side of, you know, I really don't need to see this again, like this type of story, because again, the, the changes are not enough that... Aside from, like, they don't go to New York in the end, like, you're still getting a story of, hey, there's a giant ape on an island. Uh, all right, what's like, your rating, Dana, on this um, one? I'm going to give it three and three quarters. Wow, that's actually a pretty generous sound. Because, one. like, the filmmaking itself is good. Like, the, the effects are well done. I, I am a sucker sometimes for, like, monsters ripping each other apart. So, like, you know, the, the, the fight scenes were, like, cool. But, but if I could just do without, like, the human parts of it, I'd be like, oh, okay, this is a great story about nature. <laughs> <laughs> 